Hello everybody, it's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter and welcome to my weekly episode and this is episode number 126 and today we're going to talk about a variety of things so let's get right into it. Now behind me this is not a new quilt. This is one I made oh about a month or so ago it was the mystery quilt. I've already talked about it but the reason I have it behind me as a backdrop is simply because I have not finished the quilt called Jenny Lane. That's the one with all the houses and I have shown you bits and pieces of it. Well right now I have it all quilted. All I have left to do is put the binding on it and I have the binding made and after I'm finished today's vlog I'm going to go about putting the binding on and uh, I'll be showing that one to you next week. But I'm not going to be calling it Jenny Lane. The reason it's called Jenny Lane is because it was a pattern from Block Magazine by the Missouri Star Quilt Company and they labeled it Jenny Lane after Jenny Doan. And uh, as I got working on it and quilting it I started out with great intentions. There's a lot of negative space and a lot of areas that need to be quilted and I was determined that I was going to do this at least as uh, ruler foot quilting uh, because of the linear uh, design of the houses and things like that. So I was thinking, you know, in the peaks of the houses I would do echoing triangles and in the body of the houses I would do a series of, you know, vertical lines, straight lines and horizontal straight lines. And then I wasn't sure what I was going to put into all the background negative space. So I started out doing that and discovered very quickly that in order to do that it was going to take me forever. I wouldn't have that quilt done until this time next year. So I abandoned that and went completely to free motion. Now I did the same idea except I did the echoing of triangles and the echoing of vertical and horizontal lines but I did them in free motion. So all of my lines are really quite wonky. Now at first that bothered me and then I thought you know no I'm going to live with that um, because actually Funny enough, it kind of suits the, the quilt itself. It's kind of like um, a kid's drawing. They're scribbling, you know, in a coloring book uh, with some basic shapes. Um, so I did that. I did do ruler foot quilting uh, in the, the white negative space as well. Again, it's kind of wonky too. But, you know, practice makes perfect and I'm getting a little bit better with it. But I'm, what I'm really getting better with is confidence level. Or maybe it's just I don't care syndrome. Like I was all about getting the quilting perfect. And you know that only happens with those of us and when I want to say those of us not me who practice constantly and have been doing it for years. So you can't expect perfection for a while unless you just have a really great natural talent which some people do. I don't. So um, I just, just thought, you know, just embrace what happens. And actually, it's looking pretty good. Even Walter thought it was. But I could pick out all of the mistakes that I made, all the, you know, th little things like that. But when you look at it as a whole, you don't really notice those first. Unless, of course, you are an actual seasoned quilter. But I thought I'd show you what I'm talking about. I did a little short little video clip uh, with my quilt laid out um, on my quilting tables. That's what I call my setup for doing the quilting. And let you see that. And then come next week, um, I will let you see the finished quilt. So we'll go to that right now. Okay, this is just a little sneak peek of what I'm working on here. This is the Jenny Lane quilt, but I'm renaming it the Tiki Tacky Little Houses. And I've started doing the embroidery, not embroidery, the quilting, as you can see. Now, I started off with trying to do ruler foot quilting, but I soon gave that up and I just went to free motion. So I decided to make all the houses irregular. Yeah, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So you can see I'm using free motion, just doing echoing lines, and they are not very straight. And if you look in the background, this is where I am using ruler footing, and it's a little wonky too. But you want to know something? I think it suits the style of this quilt. And again, as I said, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So I will be showing you the whole thing when it's done. And by the way, I think I may have mentioned it in the video, but in case I didn't, I've renamed this quilt. It's now called Tiki Tacky Little Houses 
because my quilting is very ticky tacky. Okay, moving on and speaking of Missouri Star Quilt, I got my order from Missouri Star Quilt. And you know, I was a little concerned that this was going to take forever because the last time I ordered anything from them, it did. And I think I told you that story. Um, they have a, a disclaimer on their site that says it will take three to set three to ten days to get. And you want to know something? That's exactly how long it took. It took ten days. I'm not going to complain about that because I got my order and I got a couple of extra things as well that I'll talk about in a second. So what did I order? Well, I ordered some glass head pins. There's 210 in a case. In fact, there was such a great price for glass head pins because I don't know if you've gone looking for glass head pins or not, but they're expensive. Very expensive. Even on Amazon, they're quite expensive and you don't get for what you're paying as many as I got for, I think these were like four American dollars or it might have been even less than that um, per case. So I ordered three. Now you're going to say, well, why do I need that many glass head pins? I don't. These are for my pin cushions. I intend to use these um, because they're all multicolored as well. I intend to use these in the pin cushions that I'm going to give away at Christmas as gifts. And just as an aside about the pin cushions um, that I'm making on a 3D printer, I should be able to start producing those a little faster because I bought a second 3D printer. And if you want to know all about that, I've explained what the problems were with my original one, the hell I went through last week, and why now I have two 3D printers. So that's all in my vlog that went up uh, uh, yesterday before this one. So you can check that out if you're interested. Okay, so I got those and um, I bought a layer cake. Um, I think this one is called Neutral Batiks, 10 inch squares. There are 42 of them in the pack. Another thing that was a really great price, I'm not going to undo them all, but you know, these are nice. And uh, here's the funny part. When I checked the tracking on my order, they sent me a tracking number and said that it was on its way. They listed, of course, what was in my order. But it did say partial order. And I thought, no, I checked back on my records, or at least I thought I had. And no, everything was that I ordered was coming, so I just ignored that. So the order came, I checked it off, everything was fine. About two days later, I got another email from Missouri Star Quilt telling me that the rest of my order had been shipped. It hasn't arrived yet, it arrives uh, tomorrow, I think. Might actually, no, today, it's supposed to arrive sometime today. And it's another one of these, except it's in brights. So I had forgotten that I had ordered two layer cakes. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess the first one wasn't in the first order for some reason, but then came the second order. That kind of bothers me a little bit though. Why couldn't they send everything at once? Well, I guess maybe it was just temporarily out of stock or something and they got it right after they shipped the order. Um, so they were sending it to me. Um, I suppose it's better to get, well, I'm not sure. My, I'm, I'm out to lunch on this one. Uh, <laughs> when am I not? Uh, but do I wait for a whole order? Some places do that. They hold your whole order until everything comes in. And so you don't know when you're going to get it or be happy with getting a partial order and waiting for the rest of it to come. I have mixed feelings about both of those methods. I just like to get my whole order at once, you know, when I'm supposed to get it. Um, and I would like to be forewarned before I check out that there is, there's the possibility something's not in stock. I guess they don't do that because then you'd probably not order it, right? But whatever, it's coming. So that's great. So I got that. Now, I did buy um, a charm pack or two. This is a strip pack, actually. I, I really love the colors on it. The prices were all very, very good, even with the exchange rate. I can't complain about the price. Um, and shipping, I forget what I paid for shipping, but it wasn't that unreasonable given the amount that I ordered. I ordered well over $200 worth of stuff. So uh, I didn't get free shipping because they don't give you free shipping if you're in Canada, only in the United States and only in the United States that are, what are they, what's the word? I forget, contingent or something, not contingent, Contigu contiguous or whatever, meaning that they all touch each other. So poor old Hawaii, uh, 
Alaska and I guess Puerto Rico, but I don't know if they consider Puerto Rico is not really a state. I guess it's a territory, whatever. Um, probably should be a state. But anyways, they charge those places shipping as well. So I shouldn't feel that they're discriminating against Canadians. They're discriminating against their own people. A lot of companies do that in the States. It probably must make shipping costs very, very high if it's, you know, goes to Alaska or Hawaii and, and Canada, of course. Okay, so anyways, I got that and I ordered a charm pack. They call this vintage. I don't know why. Here's what it looks like on the back. Um, doesn't look, I suppose it looks a little retro, 1950s, maybe. I don't know. It's Paisley in it, so 1970s, 60s, I don't know. But anyways, I thought the colors were nice in it and the price was right. But I got another one. This was a freebie. I didn't know I was going to get this. I guess I missed an explanation of that on their website if there was one, but it was a pleasant surprise because it said on my order form um, over a hundred dollars and then they listed this. So I guess if you ordered over a hundred dollars, you got a free charm pack. And these are sort of read almost like solids. So yeah, bonus. And in fact, there was another freebie in the set too. Uh, a two pack, two pack? Yeah, two pack of 45 millimeter blades. Now I have lots of blades. I'll probably never open this because I never use my 45 millimeter blade. But again, this was a freebie. I didn't order this. And it said on the thing, if you ordered over $50, this was thrown in. So really, it seems like with every $50 and up, you get a freebie at each level. I didn't see that. I need to explore that a little further because that's kind of cool. I mean, that's impressive actually. Um, I did order a couple of marking pens. These are heat erasable pens. I'm always looking for the ultimate marking pen, that pen that comes out of your fabric really easy. So I bought both of these. These were like $1.98 or something, uh, American. Um, so I'll give them a try. I haven't tried them yet, but I will and I'll report back when I do. But the real reason that I got turned on to Missouri Star Quilt they send you an email every day. In fact, I think I just unsubscribed from that because it was getting annoying. And they have a sale every day, pretty much, on something that they're featuring. Well, the one day it came up and they were offering three meter cuts, three yard cuts, sorry, American terms, three yard cuts of fabric um, for, I don't know, something like $7.99 Canadian? Holy crap! That is cheap even with the exchange rate and the shipping in Canada. So I thought, you know, it'd be great for, to have that for backing uh, fabric. So I picked out three. Um, this one, and it's good fabric. It's uh, Bentertex, 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 Bentertex. I've heard of them before. I've probably had some of their fabric. So I got that. I got this. And this one's really kind of cute and cool. I had to have it when I saw it. It's all these musical instruments. Get the glare off here. So yeah, they were a really good price. So that's all the stuff that I bought from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. And as I said, I'm expecting from them another one of these, except in brights. That was in neutrals or whatever just packing everything away here in my little box because if i don't i'm going to have stuff all over my table and i won't find anything so yeah i mean i made some disparaging remarks about missouri star quilt company before um i take them back take it back it looks like they've improved their shipping i mean 10 days from the states from missouri that's okay that's okay I can live with that. And the freebies I can definitely live with. So um, they treat their customers right. So, yeah. Okay. What else? Well, speaking of getting things, Walter bought these for me. He was putting in an order at a, um, a site that we have reviewed before called Cleaner Supplies. There's one in the States. There's one here in Canada. And if you're looking for sewing notions, equipment, things like that, they're the place to go because they're basically a wholesale place. In fact, I know that my local quilt store 
orders from them as well. So um, I don't mention it to them that I know that. So if they see this, then they'll know. But uh, yeah, I kind of figure out what their markup is <laughs> from that. But as an ordinary person, you can order from them too. And um, they may be listed. Do I have them listed? No, they're not listed in uh, my show notes, but they are listed on the latest issue, uh, editions of So Chatty. And it's a permanent listing now because we go to them a lot. So Walter was putting in an order and he said, hey, they've got those uh, pins that you like, curved safety pins, the ones that I use for basting my quilts. And I don't think you can ever have enough of them. So I said, yeah, actually order me a couple of packages of the one and a half inch, I like the bigger ones, uh, from them. And I forget what they were, like $2.98 for a package of 40 in their dritz. That's pretty good price. That's a much better price than what I paid for the other ones that I bought that are exactly like this. And a lot better price than what you're going to pay in a uh, quilting store for them as well. So, Walter ordered me some. <laughs> well, he ordered me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven packages. So there's 210, right? Seven times 40, seven, nine, no, 280 of uh, pins for basting. So I have no lackage of them, um, but good price. So that was nice of him to do that. People criticize me, think I give Walter a hard time. Yeah, I do. <laughs> But believe me, he gives me a hard time too. So it's mutual, but that's fine. Okay, so that takes me to my demo of the week. Coffee time. Slurp, slurp. And I thought I would talk a little bit about bobbin holding holders because there is such a variety on the market. And I have tried them all. You have boxes, you have rings. Um, you have little clips and things like that. So I thought I would talk about the ones I've tried and what I like and what I don't like. So the very first type that I bought, and I don't have one out to show you, but you know, are those acrylic boxes. They all sit in the little box and you, you, sometimes you can get the boxes that you flip over, they're double-sided. And that's fine, but getting your fingers in there to get them out is a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, and yeah, there's nothing wrong with those if you like them. Uh, I mean, you can see through the box, you can see all the colors that you have already in bobbins and things. So yeah, they're okay. I just don't use it at all. I was using these, these plastic little donuts, these rings, but you can see what the problem is here. See the threads hanging out? Like it doesn't matter how many times I wrap those around. I have threads all over the place. So I do use these only because I have a bunch of them, um, but I stick bobbins that are odd bobbins in them. I mean, you can hang them on your wall to look pretty, okay? <laughs> like a little wreath kind of a thing. But I don't bother with those anymore. Um, I did try these things, these little sticks. They've come in a bundle of five, I think. Uh, I'm not even sure what the price is. Um, these, the idea is you can take a bobbin and put it on top of your spool of thread like this. It'll hold the bobbin, the matching bobbin to your thread. Now I use them for ones very specialized. This is a metallic thread. So that's why this has one of these on. It's in my thread stand. This is not something I reach for all the time. But the one problem I have with these little plastic clips are they're very brittle. So over time, if you're using them a lot, in and out, in and out, in and out of your spool top, they will snap on you, um, but they work for something like this. So I use them for something that's infrequent, it's something I, I hardly ever reach for, and I just keep the bobbin right with the thread. Great too, I suppose, if you're going on a retreat or to a class and you know you pre-wind your bobbin or whatever. Of course, it only holds one bobbin per spool, so you know, not the best for mass storage. Um, Another thing too, I have found, I have never really opened these or used them uh, because I'm pretty much sure they're <laughs> completely useless. These are the same kind of idea as those other clips. 
so you can put your bobbin on top of your uh, spool of thread but if you take a look and as I said I really haven't tried these out well why don't I pull one out yeah let's let's give it a shot shall we okay I'm destroying the package now but that's okay I think I got these as a freebie in a swag bag at one of the retreats I went to because I'm pretty sure I didn't buy these okay well they're rubber all right they look like hard plastic but they are rubber all right let's uh let's see what happens we'll just take this so how do you use these oh I think this end goes into the bobbin yes it does and then this end goes into your spool of thread and you squeeze it oh okay actually I take it back that's not bad because it's real I thought it was hard plastic and I thought the little nubby end this end went inside the bobbin but it doesn't it's this so it'll fit or this will fit into any size spool which is kind of nice because it's expandable and it fits fairly snugly and then this goes on top and because it's rubber it sticks to the plastic okay I take it all back these aren't bad again they're kind of single use because you know it's for there's the problem with the thread again I have my bobbins on wine but I mean they're they're no good for mass production but yeah, they're okay for that so okay I take that back in fact I'm gonna leave that one right on there learn something new every day don't you don't judge a bobbin holder by its packaging okay so I just showed you though the problem I'm having with these bobbins like you know you get all these the loose thread now I know if you wind it tight enough and pull it in towards the edge it supposedly will stay you're kind of catching it under there but you know I don't trust that so I bought a whole bunch of these things what are these things here's a single one these are a little rubbery plastic thing and you put the bobbin you put the bobbin in here and that supposedly holds your bobbin and then you can put it on a key ring or a C ring or whatever like this and you've got them all laid out okay I don't use these at all I did use them at one point but what I found was you sometimes your bobbin would sort of pop out of it now it does work like a closed peg so you just open it and close it like that but it it does work but yeah and I also found putting them on like a keychain or a ring you're leafing through it I guess the idea is you get them on there if I had something a little bigger and you get it off yeah if you if you needed a whole bunch of bobbins that you want to throw into a bag that you were taking to a class or a retreat of the same kind that might be convenient for that you know um, but like I just don't use them that much okay so what do I use well I've devised my own system you've seen this before because I've shown it before I printed this on my 3d printer I designed it on that and this sits over on the little table behind my sewing machine and that's where I drop in all my most used bobbins okay I got one here that's going haywire on me I'm getting the thread all over the place um why is this different from a box it's not it's a box it doesn't have a lid but what it does it holds let's see one two three one two three four five fifteen in a section so this holds sixty bobbins the way that I designed it and it's not that big uh, now I wouldn't recommend that this one you transport <laughs> because without a lid these will fall out but as I mentioned last week what I do with the thread that is the bobbins not used up from the embroidery machine but the embroidery machine says you don't have enough um, I just drop them in here and as soon as I need a bobbin for my sewing machine I reach in here first and use up what's in here um, it works for me but as I said it has its limitations it's no good for transporting the bobbins and you still have the little problem with your 
thread on your bobbin it's all going every which way as you can see another one which is a another 3d printed one that i found online and this is a variation of the donut and i put my odd bobbins in this and yeah this works fine um they spin around you know it sits on my desk too so it's another thing so and then i have a little mini one um this is how i'll sometimes organize bobbins i printed this on the 3d printer as well and it holds i think 10 yes 10 and when i'm winding bobbins for uh quilting i will wind about 10 of them six to ten depending on the size of the quilt and i just put them on this and they're separate from everything else i don't go hunting for them it stays on my next to my sewing machine so yeah that works for me as well are any of these the ultimate no none of them are the ultimate uh it depends on you what works for you and i'm still experimenting with bobbin storage because you know you get a lot of bobbins a lot of bobbins as time goes on uh, in your sewing so you need some place to put them and if you're just throwing them in a drawer well you know what you've got a bobbin mess they'll all tangle up together ask me how i know yeah so i'm still looking for the ultimate bobbin holder i guess my problem is i don't know what that would be so for right now the ones that i have 3d printed are working fine for me so yeah that's what i want to talk about today about bobbin holders all right so that takes us to subscribers quilt of the week now i cannot i'm not sure how you say this last na lady's name she is from australia uh, her first name is vanessa and her last name i'm going to try it but sorry vanessa uh, vanessa when you see this uh please excuse me for mispronouncing your name it is mac mac kegnan kegnan mckegnan mckegnan m-a-c-c-a-g-n-a-n -A -A so i'm sorry i butchered that bad but she has some really nice quilts and i'm going to share them with you right here this week's subscriber quilts come from vanessa now i'm going to blow her last name mac kegnan i am pretty sure i haven't said that correctly and i'm so sorry vanessa but vanessa is an aussie and you know how much i love australia and she has sent along this picture where she is showing a bunch of her quilts and they look absolutely lovely. The one that she's holding in her hand uh, looks like it's probably applique. Well, not probably, must be. And it looks like very detailed work. But she does write, I'm a self-taught quilter and I've been quilting for over 30 years and have only done a couple of classes as I work full time and it's difficult to go to these. You are both doing an excellent job with your YouTube and sewing. Keep up the great work. The photo is only a couple of my quilts. Most have been given away. The gnomes in the photo I have only just finished while in level four COVID lockdown here in Sydney, Australia. We can't go anywhere. Keep safe. So that looks really, really nice. And your quilt stack is extremely impressive. I would have liked to have seen more of those quilts and so maybe Vanessa you might consider taking uh, a few of your quilts or pictures of a few of your quilts opened up and maybe I could put a little slideshow together to show your creations because I think they're well worth seeing so thank you very much for sending those to me so that takes us to shout outs for this week so right off the bat we're into August now this is August the third uh at the time of recording and that means it's the first week of august and the first wednesday of august is tomorrow and on the first wednesday of every month we have craft and chat so that happens it's a zoom craft and chat everybody is welcome we start at 1 p.m eastern standard time and go until about 4 p.m uh i'm not sure what time that would be out for you if you're in central or pacific time um or the other way uh, but all are welcome it's very relaxing it's fun i find it invigorating i find it inspiring um, we have nice conversation with people and uh, no drama 
We try not to talk anything about COVID or anything like that. We just work away on whatever we're working on. It doesn't matter. It can be knitting, crocheting, quilting, sewing, paper crafts, making a shopping list, whatever, you know, whatever floats your boat. It's just an opportunity for you to have a few hours in the middle of a week where you just dedicate that time to yourself and to what makes you happy. So you can come at one, you can come at two, it's come and go as you please. And the Zoom link for that is in the show notes. There's also a link to this, the past week's So Chatty episode, number 19, where we talked about our favorite YouTube and web, YouTube channels and websites that we go to and why they're our favorite. And we're looking at it in terms of what we glean from it in terms of information and education. Um, there is a link to the pattern, pattern I have this week that I'm going to talk about and to a website that I'm going to talk about and to the online quilting store I'm going to talk about as well. And of course, there's all my three favorite quilt stores are also listed in the show notes as they always are. So that takes us to the YouTube channel of the week. And this one is called Mostly Quilts. So I'm going to insert my little review of that right here. This week's YouTube channel is called Mostly Quilts. And I came upon this one by accident. Actually, the person who puts this up had written me a comment under one of my videos where I was talking about uh, doing uh, quilt as you go uh, technique. And uh, she pointed me to one of her videos where she actually tried this out. And I found it very, very useful because basically it showed me what the problems are with doing something like quilting in the, uh, or quilt as you go technique. I think I called it quilt in the hoop, didn't I? But I meant quilt as you go. So I thought I'd investigate her YouTube channel uh, a little more. And I found that she has a lot of very useful videos. And you can see here, she has uh, ones about preparing for a craft fair, tote bag tutorial, easy, um, buying fabric online, an unboxing. Um, she has a series, which actually she pointed me to, that has four episodes that's called Hang a Quilt Outside Like Mary Fawns. And this is the one, I think it was episode two of that, where she talks about quilt as you go technique. And she's very, very honest about the whole thing. She started out in this series very positive about using this method. And she shows you clearly the problems that she had with it. And I really appreciated that because, you know, I like to show my failures or my mistakes as much as my successes because I think that's very real. And we all um, go through those kind of trials and tribulations when we're learning how to quilt or even if we're an experienced quilter. So it's nice to know that other people are having the same problems. And she shares her solutions to her problems as well. Um, she has different quilts, uh, butterfly scrap quilt block, um, wool applique. Uh, here's a whole series. She likes to do things in series, which I appreciate because she breaks up very long or what could be very long videos into smaller parts, which are quite manageable. Um, so this one called the deer quilt is an example of that. Um, carrying down a little bit further on. Uh, she has a craft challenge. I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, make your button-up shirts into a quilt. That sounds interesting. Um, what else has she got here? Sew on cardstock. That's an interesting idea. That one, she says, a gift tag tutorial. Uh, let's make lace bunting. Again, uh, a whole lot of different things on here that I think would appeal to a wide variety of people. Um, so I would su su suggest, oh, rent it lips, I would suggest very strongly that you check out um, this particular YouTube channel and I have the link for it in the show notes below. So that's mostly quilts. Check it out. So that takes us to my pattern of the week for my vision board. And lately I've been showing you ones for bags. Um, and this is another one. This is another one by Annie. And it's called Running With Scissors and it's a tool case. Get the glare off it. And uh, 
This one is going to be part of my, my big idea here is to make the Poppins bag that I've already uh, talked to you about before, the great big carpet bag kind of style thing, and make all these little insert cases for various tools and products and that'll drop right in it. So it's one stop, one stop shopping when I go to a retreat or a class and reach in there. So this is one of those bags and you can see it's got spots for it's called running with scissors and basically it is designed to hold all your different kinds of scissors scissors but i'm sure you can get other things in it too like rotary cutters maybe small rulers things like that and it looks kind of cool that it you can fold it out so it sits up on the table next to your sewing machine so you can reach for some of the things that you would most frequently reach for um, so that's another project that is on my list i haven't even started these yet so who knows but that's my plan anyways uh to make a bunch of these things and it's by annie so i know that the instructions are going to be very clear and of course just like most of by annie uh products there is a coupon in this one for five dollars add on video and basically her videos are all five dollars so when you get one of these you're getting a free video tutorial and her video tutorials are excellent okay so that's another project for the future so moving along uh i have another interview i have a little teaser for this this is by a person uh, i mean i've reached out now to some other sources for interviews besides just my regular subscribers because i'm not getting anybody biting on here people come on people are telling me they love these interviews well come on be an interviewee let me interview you you know the drill it's in the show notes please don't be shy i don't bite anybody i give only a positive interview okay i try to make it as relaxed as possible for you so please consider it so i reached out to a person who's on the Quilters Way, which is the online membership group that I belong to, that's located out in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, run by Kim Jamison Hurst. Hurst Jamison. Ja Kim Jamison. No, it's Jamison Hurst. Anyways, um, and I've talked about the Quilters Way and how much I love it all the time. Well, one of the original members to it, and I'm an original member as well, uh, is a guy named Rob. He lives in the Netherlands, although he's an American. He's lived in the Netherlands, I think he told me before, about 21 years. And Rob's a very experienced quilter, and I call him a friend. Rob and I have never, ever met uh, in person. Um, maybe someday we will. I mean, Walter wants to go back over to Holland at some point when, you know, whenever we will be able to. And so, for sure, we will go to you know, meet up with Rob at the time. But we see each other on the Quilter's Way on a regular basis. And so I thought Rob would be an excellent candidate for an interview because of his experience. And he is a wealth of knowledge about threads, thread manufacturing, uh, sewing machines, and techniques. He's into uh, quilt making. He's also into embroidery and b blending the two together. So he's a real wealth of knowledge. So that's why I wanted to interview him uh, as well. So I have a little teaser here of this interview and it will go up later today. I just remembered I haven't put it up yet. So once I get it up, I will have in my show notes the link to that as well. But here's a little teaser uh, with Rob got a lot of years under your belt then. So how'd you get started? I had a, I had a bone disease when I was younger and I had to walk on crutches. So that took me out from playing sports and doing the normal things that a child of the sixties would have done. Right. So after school, I had to stay with my grandmother and she was a sewer. She made cabbage patch dolls. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> I don't know if that was, that was a thing in Canada, but it was really big yeah. in the early 70s in America for extra money. And uh, so I was bored. And of course, you didn't have 200 channels of TV back then. 
So what did you do? And I couldn't do the normal things. So I would take the scraps and I started hand quilting and hand piecing. And my grandmother taught me and my first was like either a baby blanket or a crib blanket for the Cabbage Patch dolls made with their clothing scraps. Hmm. And I really, really enjoyed hand quilting. I, I've always, until the last five or six years, I've always been a hand quilter. I hand pieced. I did everything by hand, cut with scissors the whole nine yards. And I progressed. Uh, my grandmother, after a couple of years of working in the living room, started taking me to her monthly quilt bay with the ladies. And when I learned to drive at 16, my grandmother didn't drive. So I had to take her everywhere. So I got more education. Uh, like we, I took my grandmother, she was a fat person. And uh, so we went to Nashville, which is where I grew up in a small country town outside of Nashville, to take a class from a gentleman named Philip Peppa, Pepper. Mm -hmm. And he was like the faff artisan of the 70s and the 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wrote several books. And I know I drove her to Nashville for this class and I was ready to be bored to death all day long <laughs> and Philip in the class said we can't have you bored in the corner and went into the showroom got me the new top of the line fap of the time brought it into the classroom mm -hmm. set it down and he goes you're going to take this class with us now as I said I need people to interview. I think I have one more person lined up. I'm going to be interviewing them tomorrow. And so that will be for next week uh, when I get that interview up. But then I'm out. So come on, people. I need you. All right. So that takes me to the, one of my quilts that I'm going to critique. This one you saw some time ago when I finished it. It's, um, well, it's almost been a year come October before. It's my holiday. Halloween uh, in the hoop embroidered um, wall hanging. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd pull it apart. So here we this go. This week's quilt of my own that I wish to critique is my Halloween wall hanging. Now I'm really proud of this one. It took quite a bit of time to do because there are 16 separate tiles, as they're called, in this. This is all done in the hoop and it is completely embroidery and with some applique pieces as well. It's a Nita good design uh, pattern and um, I really, really loved it. It uh, went together fairly well, but it, as I said, it took a lot of time because if you look here, you will see not only are there these panels or tiles, but there's also these little sashing pieces that are all embroidered as well and then of course you have to assemble it now the quilting is built into the file in the background you can't see it very well in this picture but each one of these is uh quilted and then i just layered it i added this border around it and um that was all i did now in hindsight, I think it might have looked a little better if I had done some form of maybe some walking foot quilting in the border pieces. But overall, it turned out very nice, and I'm very proud of it. And I don't just put it out at Halloween. I have it on my wall in my craft room up all year round, because when you put that much time and effort into a project, even though it may be seasonal, I think it should be out on display forever and all time so to so to speak anyways i'm stumbling over my tongue here as i explain this but this is something that uh, if you have an embroidery machine you might want to try just be prepared for it to take a very long long time 
So that takes us to the uh, online quilting store of the week. And this one is called Cottage Quilting. They're out in BC and I have ordered from them before and back quite a few videos now. It was right after the Canadian National Quilt Show that I discovered them and I ordered from them and I was very happy with my order. So I thought I'd do an in-depth review of their website as I do. So here's this that. This week's quilting store online is called Cottage Quilting and you can see here this is what the front page of their uh, website looks like. Looks like they sell Elena uh, sewing machines and Gemmel and um, Bernina sewing machines. So let's uh, go to their home page. I think I'm all, probably already on it, but uh, let's go there. And they do have store specials this week and they tell you what those are and you can get their uh, newsletter if you sign up. And it looks like it, when you sign up, they'll, you can save 10%. So that's interesting. So let's just go down the page a little further. And here we see a lot of their sewing machines and what their prices are. And they also looks like they've got a um, AccuCut system. And then they have their fabrics and everything else. So let's go back up to the top and look at shop by. So there's accessories, AccuQuilt, batting books, fabric, gifts, kits, new arrivals, notions, patterns. Oops. Let's see if I can cursor down. Oh, I don't like that feature. That does not seem to. I have this problem a lot with websites that have these pull down menus. It's like as soon as you're cursor moves off of them. Well, I guess I'm not going to be able to go much further down. So, okay, let's just see. Maybe if I just hover, that doesn't help either. Okay, so I don't know if that's me or them. Um, but let's just go down. Let's take a look at fabric to start with. Okay, what are they saying here? All Fabric. Cottage Quilting is a Canadian online fabric store. We have one of the biggest selections of premium quilt fabrics online. We have a variety of beautiful fabric for your quilts. Quilting cotton is fabric made from 100% cotton. Okay, blah, blah, blah. All right, the usual standard kind of stuff that, if you're a beginner, might be helpful. Okay, right off the bat, they're showing us some of Hoffman's new uh Christmas fabrics and they are costing $18.96 per meter. That's a weird price, $18.96. Um, but not out of the way. That's what uh, fabrics are costing these days on average, so that's okay. And uh, this, there's more, okay, more Christmas fabrics. So they've got a good selection of Christmas fabrics by the looks of things. And then we move down to some of their other fabrics. Now, now they're a little bit more expensive, 1996 for this line. And they have 45 pages of fabrics. So is there a way to look at their fabrics? Okay, let's see here. Let's go back into fabrics and see if there's a way to look at their fabrics in another way. Well, it doesn't look like they organize their fabrics by brand, um, but you can display as much as, well, 48 seems to be the number you can get on a page. And uh, they have 2,139 products under fabrics, so that's a lot. And you can sort by date, new to old, featured, best-selling, Okay, so and price range. So let's just go by checkout price, high to low. What's their highest? Well, that's a wide back, $39.96 six per meter wide back. That's not a great price. I pay as little as $24, $25 a meter at Ultimate Sewing. So that's a little on the high end, I think. Um, I have no idea what this is. It's stuck in here. Test product, $40 per meter. Something's not right there. Um, wow. 
This one is 7596 a meter. That, what makes that so expensive? Because that's Stonehenge. I've seen that before. It's a panel, iceberg panel. That's a lot for a panel. Hmm, that makes me wonder. Let's go back. Okay, um, what else? $30 per meter blue velvet. I don't know if that is velvet. I think these are wide backs, but I'm not completely sure. Well, 108 inches wide back. So they do. So it looks like you have a wide variety of prices on their fabric. Now let's check out. Um, I saw some pre-cuts here. Let's just cursor down a little further. Pre-cuts. 230 pre-cuts. That sounds like a good selection. Let's see what those are. So they have charm packs. They have jelly rolls. I'm a little confused about the way these are being displayed. The season, 63 inches by 43 inches. Let's click on one of these. Well, I guess this is what they consider a pre-cut and that's what the cut is. 63 by 43 inches. I guess it's, well, I don't know, is it a panel? It's sort of like a panel. Okay, I'm a little confused. That would take more study. Let's go back. Okay, so more jelly rolls. They have batting scraps I saw on there. Prices are all over the place. Um, you really have to know your prices on pre-cuts uh, on here, I think, to really figure out whether or not you're getting, you know, a good price or not. Uh, things seem to be mixed up. CQ Bento Box of Fabric. Oh, okay. Well, that's, I guess, a pre-cut. Fat Quarter Bundles. Okay, I find the organization of this a little bit confusing. I would like to see all jelly rolls in one section, all charm packs in another, um, that kind of thing. That's probably just me, but I think that would make things a little easier. Okay, what else have they got? Long, long arm machines. All right, let's check that out just out of curiosity. Um, Gamel and Bernina seem to be what they deal with. Do they give us prices? Um, yes. They do. Interesting. I wonder what it would cost to have those shipped because they're in BC. And then set up and things like that. I don't know if I would want to order online a long arm machine. I think I'd rather go right to a dealer and deal with it that way. But having said that, if you live in BC, you can probably go to their physical store if they have a physical store i think they have but i haven't checked that out yet and let's just check notions and see what they have to choose from in here and yeah i guess they've got what you'd expect it looks like a good selection prices look about standard uh, looks like they specialize in glide, uh, glide thread, which is a, a good name. Works both in a regular domestic machine and in your um, long arm, if you have a long arm. And there's quite a few pages of these. I suspect a lot of thread, and that's good. And let's just check out patterns and see what we have here for selection. Now, according to this, there's 444 products. And yeah, they seem to have a fairly nice selection of patterns as well. And prices are what to be expected. Okay, 
Let's go to, I wonder what's under flyers. Foot of the month, Brother Flyer, Bernina, Elna, Gamel, Grace, Store Flyer, Newsletter. So it looks like they have flyers for the machines if you're interested in looking at them in more detail. Store Flyer. Let's see what that brings up. Coming soon. Okay. Subscribe for the newsletter. Okay. Classes. Let's see their class calendar. Now, are they doing in-person classes now or not? Um, okay, in July, they had several classes. Let's see um, what's coming up. Holiday Bedrunner, virtual class, virtual class. Okay, all their classes are virtual. Okay, that's good, but let's just click on one and see what they have. Okay, so they tell you what the class is all about. They show you the cost. The cost isn't bad. Ten bucks for this one. It's a two-hour virtual class, so it's not a long class. Looks fairly easy pattern. It's two hours. Is there something a little bit more substantial? Christmas treat wall hanging. Sampler class. London Bills Quilted. Let's just see what that is. Well, really, that looks... It's a table runner using three blocks. Okay. So, just from looking at what classes they have, um, it looks like they're smaller projects. Possibly that's because they're virtual right now. Now, downloadable classes, that's interesting. Okay, it's hosted on a private YouTube page. And then they send you the link once you've paid up for it. They call it a downloadable class. So do they mean that, okay, that's not seeming to take me anywhere. All right, so that must be the only one they offer. Uh, they have workbooks for various um, sewing machines. Now they have clubs, block of the month. And they explain their procedures. Show what it is. Uh, our planned kit availability date will be January 2022 based on the fabric release. Full kit will cost $479.99. Wow, that's a lot. For quilt size, 66 and a half inches by 80 and a half. Well, that's not a bad size. There's a quilt along. Okay, this would take a little bit more study, but there seems to be some things there that might appeal to some people. Now they have a quilting service, edge to edge quilting service. Uh, so I guess you can send them your quilt and they will quilt it for you. Uh, email contact information. I guess that's where they will tell you how much it's going to cost. Although, let's see. Okay, here's the cost right here. If you bring your top and backing, we include batting at no additional charge. Oh, that's interesting. It's three cents per square inch for edge to edge. And there's different prices depending on, I guess, to give you an example of how much it's gonna cost you. So an 80 by 80 could cost as much as 160 or $192. Custom quilting ranges from six cents to twelve cents per square inch. Okay, so that's something. And it looks like they repair sewing machines and they have a financing plan as well. Now, do we have a blurb about them? Let's see. Uh, and I see nothing about that. What about shipping? All right, not finding much about shipping. So let's see if I can do a search. Uh, 
I don't know what shipping only is. Price. Contacts to purchase this item. What's this item? Override for the specific shipping amount. I have no idea what that means. I'm very confused. And yeah, that seems to be about the only thing I can find. Your free shipping on fabric orders over $200. Okay, but what if you don't have $200? What's it going to cost you? Do you not know until this is annoying? This always popping up. Um, yeah, I see nothing on here about shipping, about the shop. Knowledge. We want to help answer anything. If we don't know the answer, we know where to get it. We are experts in our field. We have integrity. We are honest and listen carefully to customer needs. We have creativity and hope to inspire and empower you to do anything. We are loyal and trustworthy. This sounds like a mission statement. It's how we differenti differentiate ourselves and make sure your needs are fully met. We are fun too. You know, okay. Oh, here's shipping policies. Yay. Let's go. Okay. Free shipping in Canada over $200. Blah, blah, blah about machines. Okay, processing time, shipping time, payment options, return policy. Okay, I'm not seeing anything there that tells me how much it's going to cost me, except that it's free with over $200. So what if it's under $200? I'm just skimming through here. Okay. It looks like they go through Canada Post, but they're not telling you. I guess you don't find out until you go to checkout for that kind of thing. I would have liked to have known that up front. Okay. Overall impression. Well, I have ordered from them, and um, it took a little while to get to me. I had to send them an email to see what was taking, what the holdup was on my order. Um, they did get back to me. Um, would I order from them in the future? Maybe maybe uh overall feel that i get from this is very business like um but cold um i don't see a lot of personality coming out here what i see is a company that is selling you a product um and i think the reason i get that idea is well for this thing that's rolling by right now they look like they're really pushing their sewing machines and which is fine that's what they sell um however i don't think their prices are i don't think their prices are out of the way but i also don't think their prices are fantastic um and when i read their little blurb about themselves it seemed like a mission statement which again this very cold business-like situation now that's just my impression from looking at their web page and it could be a totally different thing do they have a physical store i asked that question before and uh, of myself and i just see if i can find the answer to that i think they do okay that annoying thing popped up again um well there's about us okay Again, this their core values. This is all a mission statement that leaves me a little cold. Uh, they're in the Okanagan Valley. That's in BC. Um, I'm not seeing anything that tells me there is a brick and mortar store. Let's just go back over here go back down okay get out of my face Let's see contact us okay we have phone numbers oh we do have an address business hours so yeah they do have a physical store 
Okay, so my overall impression? It's worth checking out. They seem to have a large selection of fabrics. Prices vary. Um, they have sewing machines. They have notions. So yeah, um, I think this would be very good to check out if you live in the BC area in terms of shipping. Um, but otherwise, yeah, um, I guess, what can I say? Check it out and see what you think. So that brings me to the close of this episode and just some final thoughts. Do I have any? No, <laughs> not really, except we are about to embark on a adventure, a very short adventure. Walter and I have decided that we're tired of being cooped up with COVID. Ontario has opened up a little bit um, more. There's still restrictions and things, but we've decided to make a little kind of an overnight trip to an area west of us. Um, it's the Niagara Falls area, big tourist uh, attraction, but we thought we'd take advantage of it because usually this time of the year when you go to Niagara Falls, it is filled with tourists. And a lot of those tourists are Americans. And right now our border is closed between the two countries. However, as of next Monday, August the 9th, they're opening the border up to vaccinate it uh, Americans. So Niagara Falls will be plugged. So we thought, well, we've been to Niagara Falls many times before. I like to call it tacky town because it is. Um, we decided we're going to explore some of the areas in and around there that we've never been to. Port Colburn, the Welland area. Um, Welland is famous for its canal uh, and that kind of thing. And Walter got a hotel room in Welland. And so we're sort of centrally located to like, we're, I think we're 25 minutes from Niagara Falls or another 25 minutes to Port Colburn or something the other way. And uh, yeah, we have no idea what we're going to see or what we're going to do, but it's a getaway. It'll just be nice to get away and feel like a human again. And it may give us a little bit of a reprieve on our anguish about not being able to travel for a bit. Still going to have to be cautious about things and whatnot, but you know, it'll be something. And of course, I don't know how many fabric stores, quilting stores there are in that area. I'm going to look them up later today on the internet. Walter says he didn't really see too many um, there. Uh, and if they're in our scopes, then we'll go and check them out and I'll let you know what those are all about too. So we're looking forward to that. That's this week. And yeah, that's about the highlight that's coming up. So yeah, I'm excited. I look at it this way. It isn't here. So need to get out. All right. So I hope you can satisfy your need to get out or at least to have some fun uh, in this next week coming up. And we'll see you for the next episode of The Idiot Quilter this time next week. Bye for now.